It's Juan and Vincent from Graduate Baseball Studies, and today we discuss how deserving Ichiro Suzuki is of his legendary status. Is Ichiro overrated? Before we get to this question, we must work our way through numerous obstacles in the evaluation of Ichiro and his incredibly unique career. Ichiro is known as one of the most insanely gifted players of the 21st century, arriving at the height of the steroid era and setting the league ablaze with his ability to put the ball in play, steal bases, and play a seemingly stellar right field. His incredible accolades and his folk hero status in his home country of Japan have combined to make Ichiro one of the most revered players in the game, and there is no doubt that he will one day end up in Cooperstown. With all this being said, we seek to navigate our way beyond the mythology that has followed Ichiro since his days playing in Japan to provide a more clear picture of exactly the player Ichiro was. The first stumbling block that we encounter when trying to evaluate Ichiro is simply how he is to be evaluated and more specifically, who he should be compared to. It becomes immediately clear that comparing Ichiro's full career to that of his contemporaries is not a useful exercise, as there are several players who were quickly dismissed from Hall of Fame contention who produced more value over the course of their career. The best example of this is Jim Edmonds. Jim Edmonds amassed a very similar 60.4 R-War to Ichiro's 59.7 and has a larger advantage in F-War, 64.5 to 57.8. While Ichiro did amass over 1,000 more career hits, Edmund finished his career with a large advantage in OPS Plus, 132-107, to 107, as well as more than triple Ichiro's home run total. Additionally, Edmund's eight gold gloves as a center fielder are also very comparable to Ichiro's 10 as a right fielder. It is very difficult to make an argument that Ichiro provided more value over the course of his career than Edmunds did, and yet, Edmunds only received 2.5% of the vote in his lone appearance on the ballot. Obviously, the crucial element being ignored in all of this is Ichiro's late arrival to the major leagues. Since it does not seem entirely fair to pencil in production for MLB games he did not actually play, for the rest of this exercise, we'll compare him to individual players looking only at their statistics from age 27 onward, the age that Ichiro was when he made the jump to the MLB. When compared only against the war accumulated by players age 27 and older, Ichiro ranks 33rd and 35th all-time by Fangraphs and Baseball Reference, respectively. This suggests that Ichiro did, in fact, perform at a Hall of Fame level for the course of his career and was hampered by a late start. But to get a better picture of just what level of player Ichiro really was, it is critical to break him down further to get a more clear understanding of what he provided. Ichiro is regarded as one of the game's most complete players ever, but like most MLB superstars, his ability at the plate seems to be what he is best known for, so that is where we will begin. Throughout his career, Ichiro was, without a doubt, a singles hitter. Ichiro's career slugging percentage at 402 was well below the 415 league average over the span of his career. Out of all players with at least 3,000 hits, Ichiro has the lowest career slugging percentage. Since Ichiro was clearly below average at getting extra base hits, any offensive value he provided was entirely reliant on his ability to reach base. While his career average of 311 was 52 points higher than the league average of 259, his pedestrian walk rate of 6% over the course of his career left his overall OBP at just 355, still 29 points above the league average during his career, but lower than one might have predicted given his incredible ability to hit for average. Ichiro's most unique accomplishment as a hitter, reaching the 3,000 hit mark, is more of a testament to his impressive durability than anything else, as he trails only Ripken and Rose with his 11 seasons appearing in at least 157 games otherwise stated as missing five or less games. Ichiro had at least 720 plate appearances in 10 of his first 11 seasons to trail only Pete Rose's 13, with Derek Jeter in a distant third place with six such seasons. It should come as no surprise then that the only player to accumulate 3,000 hits from their age 27 season onward is Pete Rose. Rose, who is not a Hall of Famer, but certainly produced enough to be one, had a very similar career to Ichiro from 27 on. Rose's slash line over the time period was 305, 381-408, eerily similar to Ichiro's 311, 355, 402. However, if OPS Plus is used to adjust for era, Rose takes a larger lead with his 120 OPS Plus besting Ichiro's 107, not even factoring in any of Rose's earlier production. By using weighted runs above average, the primary batting component of the Fangraph's war calculations, Ichiro ranks 861st, even after taking away all production from other players before their age 27 season, placing him behind players such as Russell Brannion, Mark Reynolds, Todd Frazier, Scott Hatterberg, 
Neil Walker, and Ricky Weeks. In his very best year, in which he broke the all-time single-season hit record, Ichiro had only a 130 OPS+, plus, which placed him in a tie with Aaron Rowand for 32nd out of all qualified hitters. Even when Ichiro is compared exclusively to his own countrymen, his career 757 OPS is only marginally better than the 747 mark produced by the rest of the Japanese-born MLB players. Ichiro was effective at hitting singles, but was overall a very unremarkable hitter. Defense is always more difficult to measure than hitting, but Ichiro's advanced metrics do not appear as favorably as one might expect from a player who won 10 gold gloves over the course of his career. By DEF, the primary defensive component of Fangrass War, Ichiro ranks just 277th all time, once again only using statistics from players 27 and older. And in fact, in two of his 10 gold glove seasons, Ichiro actually produced negative defensive value. From 2002, when UZR was invented, through 2010, a span during which Ichiro won a Gold Glove Award every year, he ranked third amongst outfielders in UZR, but he also trailed Carl Crawford, who won only one Gold Glove during this period, indicating once again that the Gold Gloves were not entirely representative of Ichiro's performance defensively. While Ichiro does certainly appear to be an above-average defender, there is no doubt that his overall production is overrated by his 10 gold gloves, which rank him amongst the all-time greats. What we're left with then is speed, perhaps the least discussed of Ichiro's tools. While it is known that Ichiro is fast and had the ability to steal bases, Ichiro's talent on the base pass is not fully realized. Ichiro's 509 stolen bases place him 13th all-time amongst all players 27 and older. Aside from stealing at a high volume, Ichiro was also very efficient stealing bases at an 81.7% rate. While these numbers are impressive, Ichiro's overall base running prowess is put on even better display by looking at BSR, the base running component of Fangraph's War. In terms of BSR, Ichiro ranks third amongst all players and moves into the lead when only production beginning at age 27 season is included. This demonstrates that not only did Ichiro do an excellent job of stealing bases, but he also took extra bases on balls in play and almost never cost his team outs on the base pass. Incredibly, it is Ichiro's base running that is ultimately responsible for an incredibly large percentage of his overall career value. With all of this in mind, the difficulty clouding the evaluation of Ichiro slowly starts to clear. He is an all-time great base runner and base stealer who puts the ball in play and plays above average outfield defense. By taking this combination of ingredients and basing our search only off of production beginning in the age 27 season, we are left with one striking comparison, the extremely underrated Kenny Lofton. When taking just their 27 and older seasons, they stack up very similarly, with Ichiro edging out Lofton in many important categories, but by slim margins. 59.7 to 54.2 in R-War, 509 to 484 in stolen bases, 311 to 299 in batting average. The Lofton does have the advantage in OPS, 802 to 757. The Lofton also had very productive seasons before his Ichiro-esque 27-plus career. He was removed from the Hall of Fame ballot after only receiving 3.2% of the vote. This raises questions about why Lofton isn't in the Hall of Fame, but also brings into question whether Ichiro deserves to be enshrined. Probably, but if Lofton is to be used as any kind of watermark, then it should not be as automatic and first ballot as everyone expects it to be. So is Ichiro overrated? Well, that depends. Is he the legendary hitter that baseball fans often like to depict him as? Absolutely not. Is he an incredibly consistent and durable outfielder who is one of the best base runners the game has ever seen? Certainly. Ichiro isn't necessarily overrated. We just have to understand who he is. Like and subscribe for more content soon. You can follow us on Twitter at Grad Baseball. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed.